What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red River Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today. And today we have the 13th spotting vlog for you guys once again at Tulsa International Airport. So I hope you guys are excited for today's video. Today is March 19th. It is currently 7.29 a.m. Sun is currently getting ready to rise and we're going to take it over to Tulsa. Very excited. We have some good stuff coming in today, at least scheduled, but we'll have to see how it all goes down. But through the narration and hopefully some more live updates this time around, we'll be in good shape. So I hope you guys are excited and let's do this, guys. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back to another Tulsa International Airport spotting vlog. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Today's spotting vlog will be taking place on March 19th, 2021, as we had a lot of awesome stuff at Tulsa International Airport. First and foremost, the weather was absolutely perfect. We had a 70 degree day with a north wind, so we were definitely going to be taking advantage of that. The first thing I did when I arrived at Tulsa International Airport was took it over to Atlantic to see what was going on with the American Airlines grounded aircraft. And there is not many left. The majority of them, including the America West Special, has returned to service as we covered in spotting vlog number 12. There is only five remaining American Airlines grounded aircraft at Tulsa International Airport at the current time. Five Airbus A319s, including the Piedmont Heritage Special Paint Scheme. Absolutely insane to see all the aircraft that have returned to service and it's really, really encouraging. These last five aircraft should be returning to service anytime as American Airlines has stated that they would like to have their whole fleet active by May, which is absolutely unbelievable. While I was over at Atlantic, I got to see this very cool, but they are fairly common, Civil Air Patrol Cessna 182. There's quite a few of these here at Tulsa International Airport as they're going are working for the United States Air Force, as I'm sure you guys know. I believe they're universal, so they should be at a lot of local airports for you guys. So definitely go out and catch one if you can find one. But anyways, that was a very cool element. And following that, we had a lot of very cool elements over on the other side of the airport. So we took it over to the railroad tracks to see what was going on over there as we have an update clip. Alrighty guys, welcome to Tulsa International Airport. We do have a north wind today. Everything looking good. Uh, Kalida and UPS are on the ramp. Uh, we're gonna make this quick because obviously the Allegiant 319 is about to take off. Uh, there's the FedEx. He's still got the door open, so he ain't going anywhere anytime soon. As you can tell, it's 848, so we're in good shape, looking good. So let's go shoot the Allegiant. Um, it's going to be a nice angle with the lighting. Hopefully, I can get my camera through the fence, and let's go see how this goes. Um, really busy morning, which is very exciting to see. So let's go shoot this Allegiant. Great lighting today. What a beautiful day. Here's the Allegiant Air Airbus A318 and the older paint scheme currently taking off with service out to Orlando Sanford. Absolutely love catching uh, what feels like the whole fleet at this point, and they never get old. So I was really glad to see this. Alrighty, guys, looking very good. Uh, FedEx still loading up. There it is. Um, sorry about missing the good angle on the Allegiant. I'm just trying to start keep working with that fence. Uh, it's definitely a little harder with the uh, this type of lens, the 18 by 300. But we're making it do. But anyways, like I was saying, the Kalita 737 showed up about an hour ago. It's that same one that we saw in the last one, 733 Charlie Kilo, and then there's the UPS A300. The 767 must have went back uh, early this morning. Hopefully one to get scheduled for tonight. But anyways, looking really good. And then there's the uh, American Ops over there, uh, 175 and two 737s, which we've been getting more 737s, so that's good. Um, I think we'll take it over to Atlantic right after uh, FedEx takes off just to make sure we don't miss that and all that fun stuff. And we also have an interesting movement right there. Uh, sorry about the zoom. There we go, that looks nice. Um, lots of Tulsa vehicles. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but a very interesting situation. So anyways, looking good and excited for what's to come. Here we go. Let's get some footage. This will be my first time getting a nice angle of the 767. Sorry about the wind. There it is. Oh, listen to that engine start up. Here's the first time I've caught the FedEx Express Boeing 767-300 freighter flight with service out to Memphis, Tennessee. As I'm sure some of you guys may know, the FedEx Express MD-10F used to fly this flight all the time. But as of recently, FedEx has been sending the Boeing 767-300 freighter on this flight. Hopefully we'll see the DC-10 again before it gets retired, but as of right now, we have the 767. Nevertheless, it was finally awesome to get a nice perspective of the FedEx 767. My good friend Citrus Aviation requested, since we're right next to the railroad tracks, when we're spotting at the railroad tracks, no pun intended, on north flow days he requested if any trains come by to film them and i saw about 15 i believe these are mixed freight trains but here's one right here very nice intermission right there so we do have quite a few pictures to go over here i didn't film all these because obviously it's the norm but uh still a lot of really good stuff this is about an hour and a half eclipsed about uh somewhere in that range yeah we got a lot of really cool stuff to look at so let's take a look 
So right here we have a sub air. I believe this is like a beach craft. It's like a variant off the 1900. It's a longer extended fuselage. It'll be on the screen. Very, very cool. This guy was heading out to Wichita. Uh, these don't get scheduled, especially on the departures. So I had no clue it was coming, but I saw it uh, taxiing onto runway and holding short and I got to the South Observation Area to take a nice shot of that. So that was very, very cool. Next up, we have South Carolina 737 700 in the Canyon Blue livery. This guy is currently arriving in from, I believe this was the Houston Hobby flight. Uh, looking very sharp right there. Next up, we have another Southwest Airlines 737-700. This one with split scimitars, and that has the 500th uh, 737 uh, decal on there, which looks really, really cool. This guy was arriving in from Dallas Love Field. Uh, very, very cool to get to see this. It really looks nice, and I was very happy that I was able to see that. Uh, right here, we have an American Airlines 737-800 departure out to Dallas-Fort Worth. Love catching all these tail numbers. It was nice to see this one as usual. Uh, here's a T1. This guy, uh, these T1s and T6s, like we've talked about many times, usually come in from Enid to do their typical training on the main runway. Always doing touch and goes and everything. So that is a very common sight. They come like literally in every day, and I'm not even kidding. So thought I would shoot this one because why not try to catch the whole fleet there too. Right here we have another American Airlines 737-800. This one is currently holding, and it was going to go uh, do some. Well, it sat for such a long time. It sat for about an hour and a half, as we'll see in the update clips. And then uh, he went out for a little bit of maintenance flying. So that's what he was doing. So very, very cool right there. Here we have a very cool overhead shot of the T1 looking really nice. And here we go. Here's the Delta Airlines McDonald's MD-95, also known as the Boeing 717-200, arriving in from Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Wow. Absolutely beautiful aircraft. And I was really, really glad to get to see this once again. Uh, what a beauty. Super, super nice. Uh, here's another angle. I believe... I think this is a different T1, so looking sharp right there. And then finally, for this little update round, we have a Southwest Airlines 737-700. This guy has currently got nonstop service departing out to... Uh, this was a Phoenix flight, so uh, really, really nice lineup right here. So let's take a look at the update clip and proceed on from there. All right, guys, what's going on? It is currently 11.05. Uh, really good stuff coming in. As you can tell, there's been some interesting movements. We've got T1s and T6s coming in all the time here. Been some good stuff. Uh, okay, Abe Geek is on the way, which is awesome. I haven't seen him since that October 16th spotting event, so I'm really excited about that. Logan is back. Let's get him in here. What's going on? There we go. That's a W right there. As you can tell, this American 737, we shot it a couple times. Uh, it's been sitting for about 45 minutes. Uh, this is why Americans going broke, guys. Unfortunately, my guys are going broke because they continue to put, let aircraft sit for 45 minutes. There may be a reason, but I mean, after all, um, there should be a T1 back there. But anyway... Uh, so yeah, some cool movements going on for sure. Uh, we'll see what all is getting scheduled and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been quite an awesome morning here at Tulsa International Airport. And we will see how everything progresses. So we'll see you guys very soon. 45 minutes later, finally, he's about to blast off. Let's go. Here we go. Complete in uh, UPS A300, by the way. But there he goes. Okay, so he goes. Alright, so we'll get to see him do, uh, he's probably heading out for two hours, so we'll see when he returns, but hopefully he has fun. Definitely a very nice intermission right there, as you guys saw. So here's that American Airlines 737-800 that was holding like we saw, and it finally took off after like an hour. This is why American Airlines is going broke. And then we have a really nice uh, aircraft right here. Now, the GA, the majority of it was on the other runway, and there was so much civil stuff coming in. I thought it made more sense to stay over here with the civil runway. Well, we finally got some luck with this Cessna 525. This one is owned by the Encore Aviation LLC of Jacksonville, Florida. I really like this livery. This is an absolutely beautiful aircraft, and these Cessna 525 are very very common at airports like Tulsa so this was a very cool sequence to see and then we have a Southwest Airlines 737-700 service out to Las Vegas that's that uh, one with the 500 sticker on it looking really sharp and here's an Allegiant Air Airbus A319 in the uh, newer paint scheme this guy's arriving in from Los Angeles that is November 332 November uh, uh, Victor that's the one uh, we've seen that one many times, uh, or I have at least, I should say. So it was nice to see that aircraft again. We have a United Express number, EJ-145, uh, coming in from Houston on behalf of Commute Air. Then we have a United Express Bombardier Nace, EJ-550. I know it looks like a 700, but technically on the inside is a uh, 550. What's very unique about this aircraft is this is the uh, converted five, or converted 700, I should say, but it's in the old livery still. Now, if you guys remember the October 16, 2020 spotting vlog, we 
actually saw November 552 Gulf Juliet, but we have got much better shots from the same location this time. So I was very, very glad to get revenge on that aircraft. And what a phenomenal unit that is, man. That's what I'm talking about. Getting revenge is something that I'm always about, especially in situations like this when you completely thumps stuff that you used to do so phenomenal work right there next up we have a southwest airline 737-700 in the canyon blue livery with split scimitars we saw a lot of canyon blue liveries today and this is just one of many of them this guy coming in from st louis missouri next up we have an american airline 737-800 this guy's currently arriving in from dallas fort worth I can't believe I'm saying this, but from what I remember, I do not have a good shot of an American 737 landing from the uh, railroad tracks, so I was very, very glad to get to see this. Uh, and here's a wallpaper for you guys if you guys would like to use it. Here's an Allegiant Air, Airbus A319, that one that we just were talking about, currently taking off with Tulsa Tower, so if you'd like to use it, screenshot it, and if you'd like to comment, let me know, or even tag me on an Instagram story, or uh, even tweet at me on Twitter, I can definitely give you a shout out for that um, if you guys do choose to use it, so very, very cool. Right here we have a Delta Airlines Boeing 717-200, that one that we previously saw in November 982 Alpha Tango. This guy is currently lining up on runway 36 right, serves out to Atlanta Hartfield Jackson. My good friend Ralph was actually on this flight, so that was really, really cool to catch one of my fellow Tulsa guys uh, heading out to Atlanta. He was going for work-related purposes, so very, very cool. And last, but certainly not least for this uh, particular section of this video, we have the C-40 currently contrailing over. I know it's kind of top, backlit, and everything in between, but still very, very cool to see another C-40. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the update clip and take it from there. All right, guys, as you can tell, it's been a heck of a sequence. A-4s have checked in, which is epic. Gonna be awesome, haven't seen those in forever. So one's supposed to be in a very cool livery, hopefully. So really, really excited, and here we go. So as you guys can tell, the military was finally about to pick up, and we haven't seen uh, a good chunk of military in quite a while, so I was very, very pleased to see this. But we do have a couple things before we go over that, though. So here's the United Express Mitsubishi CRJ-200 in the Evo Blue paint scheme. I know it's kind of top lit, but still, why not catch it? This guy's currently arriving in from Denver on the behalf of Sky West. Next up, we have an American Eagle Bombier Nay CRJ-900 on the behalf of PSA Airlines coming in from Charlotte. Very typical, but never gets old. And then here we go. Here is a T-38 from Shepard Air Force Base that snuck in. Uh, these are not necessarily um, uncommon, but I wouldn't say that they're as common as the T1 T6s that literally come, not even kidding, every day. Uh, these come in at least a few times a week, typically, so it was nice to get to see one of these again. I believe we also saw one in the July 24th a spotting vlog, so it was very cool to see another uh, T38 check-in, and uh, I like this angle. This was really nice right here. So uh, we did uh, film the A-Force landing, and I'm super, super excited to take a look at this, so let's get it rolling. Oh, did you see the wind? Man, how about those scooters? That is the nickname for the A4. I believe these are K variants. Uh, arriving in from somewhere, um, obviously this uh, military information, some of these aircraft do not uh, come on open app uh, ADSB exchange at all, so we have no clue. They were coming from the south though, so that is something to note, but uh, phenomenal aircraft right here as you can tell. Uh, so we have 143 and 146 from Draken International. Now, believe it or not, 145 uh, recently, uh, I was told by OK Ave Geek, got painted into a really cool digital camo livery. And he's seen that aircraft at least, I think about a dozen times at Tulsa, which is crazy, before it got repainted, of course. Uh, I'll see if I can snap, uh, find a picture of what that new digital camo livery looks like online, if I can find it. But uh, such cool, uh, the CD scooters. Now, I did see one in 2015 from Drake International as well. Um, it was nice as well. Uh, these always come in when it's top lit, of course, uh, during so they can have their lunch break and everything. But to be quite honest, the lighting wasn't too bad for this sequence, so I'm not uh, too disappointed. It looks really, really nice. So very, very pleased to see those. Uh, it was so cool to get to film them too. Uh, you guys saw the trails and everything. It was super, super cool. Um, hopefully, we'll see more in the future. Um, now these are even less common than uh, 
the T38s come, oh yeah, way, way, way less common. These come maybe, I would say an average about once a month Tulsa. So definitely very, very cool to see this. And we are not done with these A4s or the T38s as we'll see uh, momentarily. So we do have a couple of things that we uh, go over here in some uh, update clips. We have quite a variety. So pretty much what happened was we were all hungry, but what happened was Logan had to go with his family, do some stuff in the afternoon. So unfortunately he had to leave. Also his uh, Instagram is TUL Aviator uh, with the underscore between T U L and Aviator, so you guys can go check them out. I'll leave a link to his Instagram, Ralph's Instagram, and OK Geeks Instagram all in the description, and I'll put his on the screen as well uh, for a little bit of extra context. So definitely go check him out. Uh, his content is beginning to roll out on there, and OK Geek is not either at this point i'm sure you guys saw him he was the guy in the black t-shirt in those a4 landing clips we were both hungry so since logan had to leave we kind of uh, correlated what we wanted to do uh you'll hear me say in uh, one of these update clips but he uh needed to go get gas so we went our separate ways for a few minutes uh <clears throat> i decided to go to a nearby mcdonald's because it was very close and with these a4s we didn't know when they were going to leave so we definitely wanted to expedite to have the best chance to see them now with the north flow uh since the sun's lined up parallel like that we were uh it was going to make for a nice opportunity to get a uh, nice uh clip sorry nice footage and uh pictures of them uh, taxing on to the runway on the threshold area because the lighting is really nice during uh you know when it's not as good on the actual runway portion you guys will kind of see what i'm talking about in these clips here uh momentarily but yeah so we do have a variety of clips here um this first one is a delta crj 900 it's currently landing in from salt lake city now this is november 679 charlie alpha now this particular registration actually is very cool because uh, it has the blue uh underbelly actually goes over the wing unlike some of the other ones and this actually is the one 400 scale jim Jet's first release model so that was very cool now i know this footage sucks right Right here but the good news is it's actually came to Tulsa a lot and I also went spotting on March 28th 2021 and we got to see this aircraft in a much better sequence so I was really really glad we could see that again so we'll uh talk more in depth about this aircraft in the next spotting vlog but it was still nice to get this footage of it right here uh and as you guys can see with the red light uh we were in good shape so let's take a look at these next few clips as I'm live narrating those what a sequence, guys. Uh, we do have red lights, so I'm not trying to text and drive by any means. But uh, as you can tell, what a crazy sequence. Uh, there's an American 737 on final, and uh, those A4s are crazy, man. Uh, absolutely insane. But we got the McDonald's over here. I'm going to hop over here real quick, get some lunch. Um, Matthew had to get some gas, and Logan had to go home, unfortunately. So that's kind of where we're at. So kind of a little distribution for a few minutes. Uh, but yeah, uh, really, really neat sequence right here. And super, super excited for everything to come. Uh, but there's the IMX 737. Uh, I got lucky with the red lights to be able to film these. But anyways, he's coming in from Dallas as usual. So uh, yeah, we'll see how long the red light lasts. Uh, if I can film uh, this whole thing, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, what a crazy sequence. Sorry for uh, limited updates. As you can tell, it's been very, very busy. But uh, it's been awesome. Um, I'm surprised we've had such a long red light. Uh, it hasn't turned green yet. And there it is. Oh, this does work kind of well because we should have a t uh we can do some spotting but the t38 should be coming over again which it's been really cool to see that uh, i'm not sure where it is um it should be coming over what a beautiful day it is man what a beautiful day um not trying to film everybody else i just want to film the plane it should be coming over there it is oh sorry i know it was in the frame the whole time and there's the american airlines uh that's uh will and break center which is really cool but yeah what a sequence i didn't have time to get the camera out but i did see it coming so definitely want to film this united express bombardier and acrj 200 back out to denver and then as we'll see momentarily here's that t38 currently still doing touch and goes looking very sharp right here as we can see camera can't focus lol Alrighty, guys so we made our way back up to the south observation area to meet back up with ok Ave geek in preparation to get to see what's going on with these a4s now, typically these smaller uh, military aircraft on their lunch stops usually uh, park on the legacy ramp so they can go in and get some lunch. However, sometimes they also park on Atlantic, so we knew they would be over there. So we took it over there and we saw some very phenomenal sequences. I have quite a few update clips in here and I'll periodically throw them in as we start to show off those pictures. So lots of really, really good stuff to come. But let's start with a bang right here. Right here we have another, so pretty much what happened was we made it over to Atlant or sorry, Legacy I should say. And the two A4s were there, the Draken Internationals and then that first Shepard T-38. 
Now, somehow we kind of missed it when we were doing lunch, but another Shepard T38 snuck in, looking really, really sharp. And I got super lucky. I saw this guy taxiing over, and I went to go get a shot of it through the fence, and I got the hang loose from the second pilot. This was my first ever time getting the hang loose or the peace sign or any sort of hand gesture from the uh, from any pilot. So I was. Mm, I don't even know what to say. Got it from the second pilot, the one in the back. What a phenomenal moment that was, and huge shout out to you for doing that because that really made my day. Uh, lucky that the pictures turned out pretty gosh darn well. Unfortunately, I had a picture before that one that you're seeing on the screen that had the thumb in there, like you could see it better, but it was a little fuzzy. But nevertheless, to even see that was beyond lucky. I saw it from a wide angle, and I was like, did that really happen? And let's take a look at my initial reaction from that. That's awesome, isn't it? He gave the second pilot gave me the hang loose. I was nervous to shoot them. Oh, there's a little sequence over there, but I was a little nervous to shoot them, but he was nice enough to give me the hang loose. What a guy. Anyways, uh, Harlan Aviationer John showed up as well. He's over there. They're currently talking. They're not interested enough in my fellow Piedmont right here, so let's get a nice angle of this while the lighting's literally perfect. What a sequence right there. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, what a phenomenal sequence that was with the T-38. That was unbelievable. I was shook about that. But anyways, we have a lot of awesome stuff going on here. So I'm going to break this Atlantic legacy sector of the video into two sections. We're going to have the military side of things right now. Then we're going to look at all the update clips. And then we had quite a nice little segment of general aviation that I'll talk about in the next voiceover segment of this video. So let's take a look at everything. So I haven't seen um, military aircraft, particularly the T-38 or the A-4, on Legacy's ramp since July 24th. Uh, there was a T-38 in that uh, spotting vlog from July 24th, but it was shaded over in the takeoff, and I was confused of what a T-38 and an F-5 was at the time, but now I know the difference. Uh, so anyways, but that was cool. So I haven't seen one since, and I was really, really excited to see these. So let's take a look at this. So here's the backlit lineup now. There's a fence over there where I could get a nice perspective as you can see and get everything into like a more like that angle type thing if you know what I mean. But there was a much better perspective that you guys saw on the thumbnail that I preferred. But what an awesome lineup that is. What was even more crazy is I was talking to OK Ape Geek. Uh, he's never seen four military aircraft lined up at Legacy at once. I'm sure it's happened in the past, but uh, especially for this being my first time shooting through the fence to get this, this was super, super cool. So the A4s typically will park here on their lunch stop and vice versa for T-38s and he said he's seen a couple instances where double A4s and a T-38 would be over here but never two T-38s and two A4s which was unbelievable and I mean what a lineup man I don't even know what to say that is phenomenal so here's the first Draken International A4 looking really really nice um man and then here's the wide angle perspective of both of them. We get a better shot here in a little bit. But the reason I like this shot is because there's actually a Cessna 525 loading up in the back. And we'll talk about that in the GA segment. Looking very, very cool. Next up, we have the first Shepard T-38. This was the one that we got many shots of. That should be the 339 uh, registration on the prefix. Looking really sharp. And then we have that fourth one right there. That should be the 394 or the one I got the hang loose on. Looking really, really sharp. Here's the double perspective of the A4s. This is definitely the best duo picture I have of them on the ramp. But we do get some really nice ones from the parking garage here in a bit that we'll talk about this picture right here absolutely phenomenal this is probably my favorite one nicely lit all four of them at legacy what a phenomenal sequence that is um this is what i absolutely love about tulsa international airport is the diversity but quantity between military action general aviation and civil is absolutely unbelievable for an airport the size of tulsa i mean that is awesome so i'm so thankful for it and i and absolutely love it every time there's always something and i really don't know what to say it's absolutely incredible so let's take a look at these update clips and look at some phenomenal views of all these military aircraft What a force that is back there, man. Wow. How about that? That's insane, isn't it? What a neat situation, guys. That is amazing. Legacy and, uh, sorry, Jet Link going absolutely strong over here. Two T-38s and two A-4s. What a rare sequence. One T-38's common, but all four of these at the same time, dang. A few serious claws and a big fire, but besides that, we're in good shape. And there's Babe.
that was some really nice footage right there as you guys could tell so while we were waiting for the a4s and t38s to taxi out before we took it up to the parking garage i thought it would be an awesome idea to catch these three biz jets that we'll see momentarily uh two of them were on the legacy ramp and one was based here so it came from a tanger so very very cool and i'm really glad i decided to take this opportunity so let's start with this assessment citation uh this is a 680 variant so this one is owned by the dcgt llc and it's registered to west chicago illinois now this particular airframe uh, does a lot of flying out of the page which is a small airport in west chicago so i take a guess that it's based uh out of that airport which is really really cool so i'm sorry that's horribly backlit but super super cool to see this this guy came in from scottdale and he took it up home to the page so very very cool right there i was really glad to get to see that next up we have a cessna 525 this is a cj4 variant in a very cool livery as you guys can tell right here so this particular airframe was built in 2015 and is by Tamer Air LLC out of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Now Piedmont is a small city northwest of Oklahoma City and this aircraft does a bunch of flying out of Wiley Post which is Oklahoma City's uh, main BizJet airport. I would absolutely love to take a spotting trip down there as they get a lot of really cool stuff, lots of gold streams. That would be a bunch of fun. So be on the lookout for that. I may make a trip down there at some point, hopefully. So very, very cool right there. Anyways, this guy was coming in from Wiley Post and he took it over to San Antonio. So very cool that this came through and uh, what a beautiful aircraft man i really like that livery our next aircraft is a very very cool one that's actually based here this is a challenger 350 as you guys can tell this one's owner is the tls aviation llc of tulsa oklahoma as it makes note this one came from one of those east hangars somewhere i have no clue which one it was but what a beautiful aircraft it is i may try to look over there and see if i can find a hangar that uh, has to do with tls because that would be the one that's at probably what a really cool aircraft this is. Now, as you can tell that first picture, the left side of the screen may look a little darker. That's because the fence got a nice piece of it, unfortunately. If I had to choose one of these biz jets to mess up, it would definitely be that one because obviously it's based here, so I'll have another opportunity to catch it. So uh, hopefully we'll see it in some better lighting sometime, but still very, very cool to get this opportunity to see it. So this guy was actually taking it up to, or down to, I should say, North Texas Regional Airport or P. Ryan Field, I believe. Uh, this aircraft goes down there to that airport KG yi a lot i mean half of its flights it also makes some trips to some florida destinations and houston hobbies on here a little bit as well so very very interesting to see that uh but mainly that north texas regional airport it goes down there like every other flight which is really crazy so i'm sure if we see it again there's a really good chance we may see it coming in from that airport which is really really neat so i would take a guess that tls aviation has some sort of facility down there or some sort of business connection or something because this aircraft particularly goes down there all the time but really really got to get to see it and hopefully we'll see it some better lighting i really like this challenger 350 the winglets look really cool and then top that off delivery is a nice clean one i really like that so yeah really really nice stuff right there and now it's time to take it up to the parking garage we got a lot of fantastic stuff coming as the a4s were taxing out well we left a little early uh, because they were uh, starting to get loaded up in the cockpits and everything so we thought that would be the time to take it over there and we got a lot of really really good stuff coming up so let's take it up to the fine parking garage <laughs> Welcome back up to the fine parking garage, everybody. Really excited to be back up here so soon as the last time we were here in terms of spotting days was only two spotting uh, vlogs ago. So really excited to be back up here. So let's take a look at all the movements that we have going on as you guys saw from that initial clip. So right here we have the Kalita Charters 2 Boeing 737-400 Freighter, the same one that we saw in the last spotting vlog. As we know, this aircraft sits quite a lot during the day as it doesn't fly during the day, of course, but really, really glad to get to see this once again and what a phenomenal aircraft that is. In the back over there, we have the UPS Airbus A300. Also very glad to see this. I believe the last time we were up here was the 767, uh, but since the days vary, it just depends on what aircraft are sitting uh, idle during the day. So that's kind of where we're at on that, but very, very cool. Here's that American Eagle Ember Air J-175. This guy was holding, as you guys saw, due to release time. Uh, it wasn't quite ready, so uh, they let him sit over there on the corner, and then when they're ready, they will take off. So very glad to see this one. This one's a former Compass Bird as well, so very, very cool. I miss them very much, but glad that Envoy was able to take over those aircraft and as you can tell right here we have the fedex atr 42 and 72 as we know these sit a lot but always love seeing them i believe all these fly for uh empire air so yeah um we have some awesome clips coming up so let's take a look at those and then review those shots <laughs> Scooters. 
we're gonna. Oh. Take a look at these fantastic T38s and A4s and then take a look at about a two hour interval of some really nice generic stuff. The weather was getting really, really nice as you guys could tell. So let's start with the Shepard T38s. So here is the one taxing over that we saw that uh, first little clip of looking really, really good right there as you can see. And then uh, some or one of them did uh, some low approaches. So as you can see right here, we have some nice uh, views of that, which was really, really cool. I don't have any like crazy phenomenal angles of these guys. Well, a few, but not anything crazy from the Shepard one. So I was really, really glad to get to see them again now i really like this one that passes by low by the trees i really like that that was phenomenal really glad to see the t38s again and i'm really excited to see them in the future once again very very soon and then of course i cannot forget this shot where uh taking off with the uh, 737s uh, i believe there's a max and a normal back there so looking really cool i really like that uh here come the a4s um as you guys probably saw that footage it was so so cool to see how loud those scooters were man Man, that was so nice. Absolutely insane to see that. So we have 143 and 146 again, uh, taxing onto runway, as you guys can tell right here. Uh, that was quite an experience, man. Uh, that was my first time seeing A4s with some uh, proper equipment, and that was a bunch of fun, as you guys can tell. I was super, super pumped about that. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about that. Uh, those Drake International ones are cool. I believe they have some other aircraft types as well, and hopefully we may get to see those in the future. Would love to go to a military show sometime or something, as you guys can tell. Tulsa gets quite a bit of military action, but not enough to see all kinds of stuff like C-17s or C-5s and all that good stuff. So I would love to do that one day. And here we have a South Carolina 737-700 with the normal winglets in the Kenya blue paint scheme. Service out to Denver. Uh, he arrived in about an hour earlier while we were over there at Atlantic looking sharp. Here's the South Carolina 737-800 in a heart livery with split scimitars arriving in from Denver as well. Looking really, really good. Here's a very cool aircraft. Here is a Tulsa-based Falcon 2000. I was super, super pumped to get to see this. Uh, we saw a Falcon 20 in the last spotting vlog, a freighter version, but finally getting to see a passenger 2000, which was awesome. Was surprised that it took 3.6 right, but I'm not complaining. It's about 50-50 for these biz jets, what runway they'll take. And as we'll see in the next spotting vlog, we got super unlucky many times, but at least we got this Falcon 20 and another few GA aircraft to come this afternoon, this spotting vlog. This one is owned by the CARE 2014 LLC of Tulsa, Oklahoma. This one's been flying for quite a long time. I have 2002 on the uh, on the airworthiness date, which is absolutely insane. So this one's about 20 years old on the dot. Uh, what a phenomenal aircraft this is. I uh, really like the look at this one as well. This is November uh, 680 Delta Foxtrot. Like I said, it is based here. It's been here since uh, 2014, it appears to be. It's been at White Plains, New York, and Memphis, Tennessee as well in its history. So very, very cool right there. Here's the United Express Mitsubishi CRJ-550. Uh, this is 5.52 that we saw earlier. United did a very interesting interval where they had a three hour turn for these aircraft. So that's why it took off so late. Uh, it came all the way back at like what? 11.30, I think, so absolutely insane. This was about three o'clock in the afternoon for context. On the behalf of GoJet, of course. Here's an American Eagle Ember Ear J-145 on the behalf of Envoy Air coming in from Chicago Air. This flight has had some very interesting movements in the April schedule, which we'll cover at some point, but for uh, March, it was a daily Envoy 145 and 175. So awesome to see the 145 again, and um, we'll talk about its changes here at some point but very, very cool to get to see it again. And here's the Delta Airlines Boeing 717-200 landing in from Lance Hartsville-Jackson. 
Uh, one of those Sears clouds that we saw in that intro clip got the better of this one, unfortunately. Luckily, we get some really nice revenge um, in the next spotting vlog from the garage at the same time frame, on the same flight number, I should say. Uh, but I'm not complaining because first off, it looks really, really nice. And then second off, we got the one in the morning. But I mean, still phenomenal to get to catch this one. Uh, was very, very delighted about that, as you guys could tell. And then finally, for this uh, section of the video, we have this Southwest Airlines 737-800. That was the one that just landed earlier. This one in much better lighting this time. I mean, the other one wasn't horrible, but as you can tell, this one de definitely looks much better compared to that one, but not bad at all. Anyways, this guy was taking it over to Dallas Love Field. So yeah, let's take a look at these update clips, and we do have a few aircraft landing, some very unique situations, so let's take a look at those. <laughs> Here we go. What a sequence it has been, guys. Dang, it's been absolutely unbelievable. Got the radio over here. Uh, Heartland Aviation uh, took it back to uh, work. Matthew Johnson, okay, he's currently in his vehicle as it is uh, a little windy. Uh, temperature's not too bad overall, but it's just windy. 61, but it is pretty chilly, 200 feet up. But anyways, a lot of really fun stuff is coming as you guys saw. Um, if I haven't done the narration, excuse me, narration for the Northern Air Cargo yet. I'll be sure to do that, but that is coming, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be epic, so keep it to grind, and let's keep doing it. Awesome to see that uh, fine parking garage. I'm not sure what they did during the pandemic since I wasn't out here, but they got their popcorn and all their nice goodies out again, so back up to the fifth floor. I'll kind of show you guys how this uh, whole process works. All righty. So this is the fifth floor, this is what we're typically on. Here's like the big window area, I'll kind of take it out to show you guys how it works. Alrighty, so what happens here is this kind of big elevator section you'll see, and this is the whole parking garage. I, down there, may look familiar, that's our area down there. So, I see that they got the popcorn stuff going. Alrighty, so the next aircraft that's about to land is a very interesting one. This is a United Express Ember ERJ-145. Now, you guys are probably wondering what's so interesting about United Express Ember ERJ-145. Well, if you guys were unaware, for a while there, there were three operators, and there may have been more, but to my knowledge, three main operators of the Ember ERJ-145 for United. You had ExpressJet, Commuter, and Transstate Airlines. Uh, these are all three subsidiaries of United Airlines. Now, uh trans state airlines uh unfortunately fell through uh i think for a variety of reasons i want to say about the uh late 2019 maybe uh somebody correct me if i missed that but uh, anyways so they fell all their aircraft to my knowledge went to um hmm, they may have got retired some of them but i thought most of them went to commuter and express jet then what happened was early stages of the pandemic i believe i want to say early 2020 uh, maybe mid uh, Express Jet was pretty much, or sorry, let me reward this. Uh, to my knowledge, United was pretty much forced to either choose Commuter or Express Jet to keep because one of them had to go for United's subsidiary operations. United, in the long run, to my knowledge, chose Commute Air and Express Jet, unfortunately, but the dust for United and all their Ember Air J 1745s, pardon me. Commuter, to my knowledge, was mainly on the East Coast, mainly doing Washington Dulles stuff and Newark, I think. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong before. Uh, the whole Express Jet situation, but then when Express Jet had to go, United transferred all their aircraft over to um, Express Jet, or sorry, Express Jet transferred all their aircraft over to uh, Commute Air, which is what it's been flying the Houston route for us now on the 145. Some biz jet took off over there, but anyways, moral of the story is uh, during this process, um, the subsidiaries have made, uh, retired the majority of the 145s without winglets. There's a ton of with winglets, but I believe there's only three without winglets, which used to come here all the time. This is one of those three aircraft. I don't know off the top of my head what the tail number is, but I'm really glad to finally get to see one of these again. It has been a while, theoretically. So let's turn on the radio. There we go. Oh. There it is. 
As you guys can tell, we have another loaded segment ahead in this video, and man, how about all the stuff coming in? So let's start with this United Express Ember Ear J-145 LR on the behalf of Commute Air. So like I was getting on that uh, live commentary, if you will, that was one of the very few United 145 LRs that are still in service with anybody. Commute Air is the only operator left of these ERJ 145s, uh, mainly the XR variants on the, uh, there's Continental Gloves and now quite a few Evo Blues as well but yeah they have uh, hubs out of newark uh washington dulles and then now houston and they've also recently started in the brand new hub up in denver so that's very exciting uh but yeah it was awesome to finally get to see one of these lrs again these used to come in all the time back when express express jet and trans state would fly them in here all the time but still fantastic to finally get to see another one this is 13913 i believe then we have united express ember ear j-175 another continental globe on the behalf of sky west airlines this guy's coming in on a denver turn looking really good and here's another t1 who would have guessed this guy came in from enid and just doing his typical thing here's the turn for the american eagle ember ear j-140 on the behalf of envoy heading back to chicago uh we do get to see one in the next spotting vlog but as of right now making this uh on april 11th those are current Currently not uh, flying here anymore so we'll see when the envoy 145s return at some point which i'm sure they will maybe a little bit but i'm sure they will come back at some point all right here's another heart southwest 737 800 this guy coming in from phoenix sky harbor uh glad to see another uh southwest heart 800 we have got quite a few but uh this one is much better light than that first one but we'll take it we'll take it there's the united 145 commute air uh lr taking off would love this angle man what a phenomenal uh aircraft that thing is and hopefully we'll get to see at least a few more i'm sure Sure, since they're kind of you know the oddball out of the fleet uh commuter will consider retiring the last i've seen four uh, to this point like i said in that uh subtitle but we'll see what happens and there's the turn for delta 717 back out to atlanta hartsville jackson international airport mm, beautiful aircraft i really want to fly one of those so bad um but really excited to see two more of them in the next spotting vlog so we will definitely be sure to showcase that when the time is right now here's our second GA aircraft for uh, this runway uh, uh, to this point. Really glad to get to see another one. Here's a Falcon 20. This one's owned by the MCB Aviation LLC. Uh, it's registered to Pasigolia, uh, Mississippi, but it uh, flies out of Gulfport a lot, so it's uh, probably based at Gulfport. So what an awesome livery this is, man. Uh, I don't even know where to start. I really like that blue uh, shade. Uh, it's like kind of like a really rich sea blue. I really like that. Uh, this one is a 1974 build, and uh, man, what a facility, man. I'm really glad to get to see uh, more of these Falcons. There's honestly quite a few of them still flying, which is very impressive. Uh, mainly those 20 and 2000 variants I see a lot, but I also see uh, some 50s. Uh, the 7Xs and those 900s and 800s don't really come here that much from what I've observed, so very interesting. And then, of course, here and there you'll get a 10 like we saw in the last video. So very, very cool and really glad to keep catching these Falcons. I would say that the 20 and the 2000s are the most common, like we kind of mentioned. So uh, absolutely beautiful, and I really like that design on that one. And here's the Southwest 737-800 that we just saw uh, turning back out to uh, St. Louis, or not turning, I'm sorry, heading out to St. Louis on the continuation flight. And then there's the turn of the United uh, 175 for uh, SkyWest heading back to Denver. And then the seeing double shot. Uh, it's kind of hard to get the lighting really good on both aircraft. Uh, about three to four o'clock is the peak time. But since it's been so quiet, uh, there's been really no chances at getting a double shot like that uh, recently. It used to be common all the time, but as of recently, it's been very, very hard to do so. So yeah, and now we have a very unique situation coming up. Uh, Citrus Aviation should be posting an aviation news video soon uh, that entails the full details of this, but I'll give the latter half because we kind of already talked about the first half of Aloha Air situation at Tulsa International Airport. So if you missed the first part of the situation, I'm not going to repeat it because we've talked about it many times at this point. Point. you can check out those earlier spotting vlogs but anyways we'll kind of pick up where, where aloha is so obviously they're flying the um ontario greensboro and then sometimes they'll continue on back over to ontario but most of the time they'll stop for their fuel stop in tulsa like we talked about so aloha air is operating a variety of 737-300 freighters some of them are registered to them i believe because on air fleets it said that they have three but they're operating now uh, definitely a few more than that because I'll explain. So we have November 301 Kilo Hotel, which is the main one that's came to Tulsa uh, a ton recently, as we'll see. And I'll kind of give an update on that at some point. So you got 301 and then 302 is currently parked from what Airfleet said. And 303 is flying, even though it's not registered to them on Airfleets. Uh, it is in their livery and it is flying. So I'm assuming it's probably theirs, but I'm not sure. 
And then there's two other oddballs that are very, very interesting, both registered under Northern Air Cargo. So we have a 737-300, uh, two of them, November th uh, 360 Whiskey Alpha and November 362 November Charlie. So these are two Northern Air Cargo Boeing 737-300 freighters that are operating for Aloha Air. The majority of the time these are flying in Hawaii, uh, like all the other ones but uh there's been some very unique sequences so 360 is in the full northern air cargo livery i've never heard of these guys before so it was really really cool to get to see their livery and then november 362 uh november charlie is all white with kind of that red patch around the tail so i'm assuming it's like a decommissioned livery type thing like a hybrid livery or something but anyways, both these are operating for Aloha Air right now. So November 301, November 301 Kilo Hotel uh, at the end of February, like we talked about in that spotting vlog, went all the way back to Hawaii via uh, Ontario and Oakland. So we were like, are we going to get the service back? So they, um, so Aloha sends November 360 Whiskey Alpha to the mainland to fly the flight, which I was shocked by. What's even crazier is I thought that 301 would go back for maintenance, but what ended up happening is it ended up just flying out there for in Hawaii with no like long intermission to where it would have a maintenance check, if you guys know what I mean. So I was very surprised to see that. So they sent 360 back to the mainland to fly the uh, Ontario, Greensboro, Tulsa, Ontario run. And it was absolutely insane. So that happened the night before I went spotting on this day. That happened on March 18th, 2021. It made its way to the mainland on the 14th, but I saw it the first time it came the night of the 18th. And I went the 19th and lo and behold, at about one o'clock, the Aloha flight got scheduled for the first time during the day in about three weeks at that point. And I looked to see what aircraft was at, uh, going into Greensboro and it was November 360 Whiskey Alpha, which I was shook by. So he was inbound and I was super, super excited. Unfortunately, the footage came out like absolute crap. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that as well for the tilting on the camera. I got a, fi uh, I got a fix for the next video, but um, my mount propped down on me and I didn't even realize it once I zoomed in the 2.5. So I apologize about that. There's only a few more clips where it's affected by it, but um, unfortunately it did ruin the uh, Northern Air cargo landing. But I mean, this is an awesome plane. What a unique situation for Aloha Air. Like I said, Citrus Aviation should be having an aviation news video coming out where I cover it a little more in, in depth. Uh, both situations, but I mean, wow. Yes. I like that livery. So like I said, Heartland Aviation had to go back to work, but he was able to get a quick little freebie, if you will, to come see the Northern Air Cargo Boeing 737-300 freighter. Now, as you can tell, he is down in the South Observation Area for this one. Uh, he didn't want to come up in the parking garage for such a short little uh, time, so he decided to use the South Observation lot, and it turned out very well. So once again, congratulations on 1,000 followers. Definitely go check him out. Great guy, and was definitely nice to get to uh, catch him in this frame. Uh, it's really ironic because obviously if the camera was pointing uh, like it normally would, uh, we wouldn't have got him in the frame, but still very cool that we were at least able to catch something when my camera messed up. So very cool sequence right there. Looking absolutely fantastic, isn't it? So here's the Northern Air Cargo 737-300 freighter, November 360 Whiskey Alpha, arriving in from none other than Greensboro, North Carolina. Looking awesome right there. So, man, really glad to get to see that. Hope you guys enjoyed that little informative section on the explaining. Uh, beautiful livery, man. Uh, I'll be eager to see what happens from here. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but if I didn't, uh, November 301 Kilo Hotel is back flying the flight now rather than 360s. It's made its way back over to Hawaii as of right now. So insane stuff, most certainly. But I mean, hey, we'll take whatever we can get, uh, most certainly, especially during these tough times. Here's another Allegiant Air Airbus A318, this one in the older paint scheme as well, arriving in from Las Vegas, Nevada. Glad to see another one. Uh, we were stocked up on Allegiant A319s, uh, one in the new livery, two in the old livery, so we will most certainly take all these Allegiant Air Airbus A319s we saw for sure. Here's an American Airlines Airbus E319 uh, with the Sharklet system, November 9022 Gulf, arriving in from Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, some really nice lighting. If you guys remember the January spotting vlog, it was golden hour. The sun was setting uh, at, on the same flight. 
Uh, now we have plenty of light, as you can tell. So insane how the uh, time change works, but what can I say? We'll most certainly take it. I uh, love that last shot with the Jello, but every shot came out really well, I thought. So really, really, really nice. Here's the Falcon 20, uh, heading up to Eagle Bell from uh, at a Gulfport, I believe. Uh, so very, very cool. I, like I said, I really like that livery. Very unique to catch all these Falcons. Hopefully more to come, but uh, mm, absolutely awesome. Here's an American Eagle Bombardier Sierra Day Dash 700. This guy is currently taking it back to Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, I barely missed the landing. Uh, I was actually talking to uh, OK Abe Geek when he was in his car, and it uh, completely slipped by that the American Sierra Day 700 uh, was landing, and I barely missed it. But hey, it's okay. Got a nice takeoff shot, and we do have uh, a lot of good shots. We do have quite a few more Sierra Day 700s for SkyWest coming in the April schedule, so I'll have plenty of opportunities to get those. And then finally for this sector, we got the South Star Line 737-700. You guessed it, another Canyon Blue livery and with split scimitars once again this guy was arriving in from las vegas nevada as well a direct competition with uh g4 so looking really nice love the uh, lighting that we have presented there and all that fun stuff so have a few update clips that we'll take a look at here so we have a few more update clips to take a look at here and let's get uh started on those dang guys it's been absolutely unbelievable like we saw with the aloha air the uh well this technically still is their flight but now the Northern Cargo livery, 737-300 freighter, if you will, is still in the same spot where you can see it all the way over there. Sorry, they're alarm for scaring me. Right there at the very end. Uh, I'll see if I can point. Whoa, whoa. That one right there. There we go. So, as you can tell, going very well. Looking really, really nice up here, man. It's beautiful. Um, got a few more arrivals. Uh, Frontiers, 8 through 20 Neo. Um, the Texty Armadillo, Armadillo, how about Armadillo livery is coming, so that's awesome. Wish it would be the Penguins or Chinook the Wolf would be the absolute best, but hey, we'll take um, the Armadillo. A lot better than some of the other ones, <laughs> but uh, it's all opinion based, but Frontier is Frontier, so that's epic. Then Kalia has got some pallets, nothing crazy special though, Allegiant's going to take off soon. Looking really nice guys, looking really nice. Reminds me a lot, it's not quite that golden yet, but it reminds me a lot of the uh, Sun Country. January 20, 20. Yeah, just chargers and stuff. I wish one would drop in right now. I went and shot. Thought I would combine those into two sections because we only have five pictures to analyze through this little segment, if you will. So we have a lot of really good stuff right here that we're going to take a look at. So here's the Northern Air Cargo 737-300 uh, freighter. Taking it out to Ontario on the flight back. Um, absolutely phenomenal, like I was saying, man. I really like that livery, and that's probably going to be the only time I'm able to catch the uh, Northern Air Cargo. Probably in general, but I may get lucky, as you guys saw earlier in the video. Uh, there is one on the mainland. It was flying around, uh, I want to say, uh, maybe Rockford, Salt Lake city in cincinnati or something so it's 405 so really really cool maybe we'll be able to see that at some point but we do have november 360 whiskey alpha for the meantime man what an aircraft and then here's the shot with the kalita 737 300 or seven sorry 737 400 th freighter that would be really really cool to get two 737 classics in one shot uh man those freighter variants absolute workhorses man what more can i say about that Really, really unique situation, and hopefully we'll get to see Aloha uh, more in the future. Maybe some different variants. We'll see. Anything is possible, as uh, we saw with those situations, most certainly. Absolutely insane. And here's an absolute unit. Uh, Frontier did make it on this uh, Friday evening in from uh, Denver, of course. So uh, they were doing free, three weekly in March, pardon me, and I think they're still doing a little bit of that here in April. I need to double check on that, but man, this is text the armadillos. Sorry I couldn't say armadillo properly earlier. Uh, at least I got a little bit figured out now but i mean mm. really like this livery it definitely stands out a lot more than it did through the pictures online i was very pleased with that and at least the footage for that one was at least okay but not great um definitely got fixed though so i'm very very excited about that i should also add that uh logan or teal aviator was actually able to make it back out at this point which was really cool because his grandma was actually on this flight which is mm, 
I was phenomenal. And he was able to catch it, which was really, really cool, as we saw in the video. So, I mean, that's just, what a phenomenal moment for him, man. To catch his uh, grandma on that flight, man, had to mean a lot. Uh, and that, that's awesome. So, I'm really glad that he was able to come uh, back and get this. Uh, he arrived when the Northern Air Cargo was taking off. So, very, very cool, most certainly. That's for dang sure. And while we're here, we'll cover these couple before we get two more update clips. We got a Allegiant Air Airbus A319 on the turnaround back out to Las Vegas McCarran International Airport really like that old livery and always a fantastic element to see at Tulsa International Airport. And then finally for this sector, we'll uh, take the Southwest Airlines 737-700 Canyon Blue with the split scimitars. That one, I believe it was heading out to Houston Hobby. Uh, so very, very good looking right there. And all these aircraft looking sharp. So we'll have another four aircraft and one more voiceover here in a second. But for the meantime, we do have some update clips. So let's take a look at those. All righty guys. So uh, Matthew and Logan both just left. Um, honestly, I don't even know why I'm up here at this point. Frontier's about to take off. So I guess I just really want to see that. But I just have this mindset. I'm like, I don't want to miss the sunset. And I'm, I'm just like big time. So yeah, I'm just hanging out just enjoying the evening. The lighting's still really nice. It's about 7 o'clock, so we still have about 30 minutes here of light. And I'm uh, just going to see what all happens. There's a uh, FedEx ETR scheduled. The uh, delivery max flight finally got uh, going, but it's going to be uh, here at like 8.30, and that's uh, near dusk, if not dusk, so that's a little much. But it's a beautiful sequence out here, and I just want to catch you guys up on what all's going on with this uh, vlog. So obviously, we've had a lot of elements. Um, a4s were awesome. Finally, great to see those. I haven't seen many of those in the in my um, career, if you will. So, really glad they get those in better lighting and all that fun stuff. T38s. Um, really happy got the hang loose from uh, that uh, pilot on the second one. That was awesome. Um, I'm really glad I was able to get the uh, obviously Northern Air cargo. That was a crazy situation. So that's just very lucky and all that awesome stuff and obviously the fine parking garage it's been vibing up here and that commuter 145 even though that was a really i guess not the coolest thing in the world i mean that's still kind of cool and all that sort of thing so i'm just kind of rest on my legs down here they have a little pillar thing so it works really well so yeah uh great to finally see matthew again and logan of course we had some great conversations and uh yeah it's been one heck of a ride i would say one thing that i wish i would have done is went to sleep a little earlier because i am pretty wore out but Nevertheless, um, my plan is to catch this Frontier. Anything else, else that may slide in, the American 737 should be here in about 20 minutes. So that will be nice lighting and all that good stuff. And then, I um, can't believe it, but it's already another spotting day at Tulsa International Airport, which I'm hoping that we can do this more in the future. Just obviously very hard to um, make it over here on a regular basis with all these videos that I produce for you guys and all that stuff and then just family events and all that and please keep in mind that I really do want to do some other airports obviously I do have my um first couple may already be out but my um Dallas and Phoenix day trip content is coming soon so that's obviously coming and then I really want to do Oklahoma City too and then obviously we've done Stillwater a couple of times so yeah, uh, but let me know how you guys are enjoying these and any feedback and comments, please leave them down below. But uh, yeah, not quite done here, so let's keep this show going. It may look a little crazy to some of you guys, but just how the world works. Two months ago, the sun was right there. Uh, let me see if I can focus with downtown Tulsa. Um, there he is. You guys see the buildings? That's where the sun was. Now it's all the way over here, which is just crazy to think about. But nevertheless, excellent views up here for Ryden. Um Dang, so pretty. I don't even want to even think about holding my phone out here because of how, you know, you get the suns right there. You guys can get the point. But see this crack right here? It just makes me so anxious. But anyways, a TMB 7s on final. So definitely don't want to miss that. So let's take it over there and get that going. And then there's an American 737. Frontier, I think they're going to probably send them out um, about normal time. Probably not all the passengers are ready yet. So, yeah, but... Taking care as we do. That's who they're about to load up Toledo. That looks pretty sweet. There we go. Alrighty, guys, let's get one final killer narration going here for you guys. If you made this point in the video, I really, really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know it's been a long video, but man, we have showcased a lot here and I've really enjoyed it. So here we have the first American Airlines 737-800 driving in from Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, that's some crisp lighting right there. I love that. That is awesome, isn't it? Phenomenal unit and really glad that we were able to see another one from the garage. 
Here's a FedEx ETR72, the same one that we uh, showcased earlier. I uh, just some much better lighting this time. I thought I'd shoot it since uh, why not? And the final picture of spotting vlog number 13 will be this TMB7. Uh, I completely forgot to look up the uh, tell number who owns it and all that good stuff, but it's got to be a private owner anyway, so very cool. It was coming in from the middle of nowhere. Do I have it on here? Where was it coming in from? Um, McAllister, maybe? I have one that says 957, but I didn't, it got cut off a little bit on my screenshots, so my apologies, but I think maybe McAllister. Sounds about right. McAllister's small town, about two hours south of Tulsa. So, yeah, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, I'm really sorry that was long, but I mean, it's been a month already since we posted the last one. So yeah, let's give you guys a little bit of update here. So uh, I went spotting again on March 28th. This was March 19th. I went spotting again on March 28th, have all the content ready, and then I am planning to edit that as soon as possible. Um, I'm currently editing, the, editing this on uh, <clears throat> April 12th. I know it's said April 10th and 11th a few times throughout here, but these take long, a long time to edit. So. Been grinding on it the last couple of days, but luckily we have can, uh, got it done, which is phenomenal. Um, let's see here. So, <clears throat> this will be coming on Saturday. And then uh, spotting vlog number 14, which will be the March 28th event, uh, will be coming very soon. Got no clue yet. Uh, hopefully, within the next two weeks or so, we'll see. I do have plans to hopefully go spotting again within the next two weeks. So, we'll have, um, we're kind of at this point where I, we do have a good, consistent amount. So, unless if I get really busy for some reason, we should have um, some uh, spotting vlogs. I'm trying to do once a month. That's my ultimate goal. But this video, I'm not even kidding, probably took, oof. Probably about 15 hours total, which is obviously a lot, but it was definitely a bunch of fun to film. We have one final outro clip for this video. So like I said, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. And please let me know in the comments section what you thought of it, if I can do any better. And um, I know you guys are probably going to uh, go after the length. Um, I'll try to bring it down, but as I'm sure you guys know, there's a lot to cover here. So yeah, let's get this outro going. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be super excited to see you guys in the next spotting vlog and all the future content to come. So Thank you guys so much for watching, and Post Narration Redditor Aviation is signing off. Unbelievable, guys. What a day at Tulsa International Airport. Like I said, lots more to come. Just really hard not to come here. Um, I know you guys may, hopefully hopefully not, but may get a little tired of kind of similar stuff. And it seems like, to me at least, it always doesn't get old. So um, I'm still enjoying it. I hope you guys are as well. Uh, it seems like we get some really good variety every time, whether that be a different uh classic or uh we're overdue a southwest special man it's been months we gotta get that in here and all that fun stuff but um days are getting longer uh lighting's not gonna get at or heat haze is gonna become a problem but we'll battle that to the best of our ability so a lot of fun stuff on the way guys uh hope you guys are excited lots more to come hopefully i'll be able to come again very soon I'm trying to do every two weeks that's my goal but that's really hard so at least once in april my main goal is if i can come once every month that is pretty impressive for an hour drive and all that stuff but uh, yeah but like i said i really hope you guys enjoyed it I want to thank you guys so 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 much for watching i really appreciate all the support and uh super excited for what's to come in the future so like i said i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you guys so much for watching take it easy guys stay safe trust the process do what you love and love what you do my name is red river aviation i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon as red river aviation is signing off <laughs>